My name is Andre Lujan. I am Executive Director of Texas Through Time. Texas Through Time is a museum of Texas paleontology. It's a comprehensive collection of fossils from all ages throughout our state. Texas Through Time is located in the historic Grimes Garage, which is known as the most famous garage in the world. Uh, Fred Grimes was a visionary who started his first full-service automotive business here in Hillsborough, Texas in 1906. Our collection at Texas Through Time is unique because we have the most diverse collection of Texas fossils on display anywhere in the world. This is from some of the youngest fossils that can be found in our state to some of the oldest. And we display fossils of all sizes, from dinosaur bones to tiny microinvertebrate fossils. We think it's really important to educate the public by showing the diversity, types, size, uh, and, and fossils from different types of environments to really paint the complete picture of our ancient history here in Texas. One of the best places to find some of the oldest vertebrate fossils in our state is the Texas Red Beds. The Texas Red Beds, or the Permian Basin, is known for its rich petroleum deposits, but it's also home to rich deposits of vertebrate fossils, like Dimetrodon, Edaphosaurus, and other small reptiles and amphibians. So for paleontology, new fossils provide new insights into these ancient creatures. And the larger the sample size, the more fossils that we have, the better chance we have at answering some of these questions. For example, paleontologists like myself have to constantly go out into the field and collect new specimens to add to collections to compare fossils and, and figure out are our theories correct or is there something that we missed. Uh, so recently we had the opportunity to go dig at Como Bluffs, a famous Jurassic locality. This is a really important site because Cope and Marsh, two famous paleontologists of our past, they actually held the bone wars there. It was the great fossil gold rush of late 1890s and uh, we were actually walking in the footsteps of giants on this famous locality. But our team went up to Como Bluffs, we scouted for new sites, found a potential site, excavated, found fossils, mapped the site, extracted the fossils, and now we're bringing them back to the lab where we can prepare them and hopefully compare them to known fossils and figure out if we've got something new or if we have something that's common. At Texas Through Time, we've got some incredible fossils from all different ages, including this Camarasaurus forelimb. This is the front limb, or arm, of a large long-necked dinosaur that lived during the Jurassic period. These were some of the largest land animals that ever walked the Earth. This is a really interesting piece because it was the first one that I had the opportunity to, um, to inspect and to appraise on the History Channel's uh, Pond Stars. Um, here we have a replica of a Camarasaurus skull. Uh, these animals had very large skulls and these large spoon-shaped teeth. And these would have been used for raking vegetation off of leaves. Ammonites are one of the most common fossils that can be found in the state of Texas. And ammonites belong to a group of animals called cephalopods. So they're really similar to squid and octopus. This is a replica of one of the largest, uh, fourth largest ammonites ever found. And it was found right here in the state of Texas in the Austin Chalk. While we had giants in the ocean, we also had giant animals on land. And one of those most recognizable animals from the state of Texas is Acrocanthosaurus. This dinosaur is basically the T-Rex of Texas. Although it was not a, a tyrannosaur, it was a large predatory dinosaur known as a theropod. These dinosaurs are the ones that made the iconic three-toed dinosaur tracks at the Dinosaur Valley State Park. The Tycota shark on display at Texas Through Time is the best preserved Tychotis uh, fossil in this universe. This is an incredibly rare fossil because sharks were cartilaginous fishes, meaning they didn't have hard bones. So the fact that we have a completely preserved skeleton of a cartilaginous fish is really incredible. If you notice, there are some small details. All of the black staining is actually the sh uh, skin of the shark. And the black donut that you see on the top of the matrix there is the sclerotic ring. So this was a reinforced ring to hold the eyeball's shape uh, at high pressures while this animal was swimming at depth. The wall of petrified wood is another one of our signature exhibits at Texas Through Time. Each one of the slabs on this wall represents a tree that is now extinct from a past time in our history. Texas had a variety of different types of trees. We had tropical walnuts, oak trees, and conifers. 
This is a really nice example of an extinct oak. Uh, it doesn't have a modern analog today. Uh, and we also have a beautiful example of a palm tree. So palm trees are actually, petrified palm wood is the Texas State fossil. Our Ice Age exhibit at Texas Through Time represents the youngest fossils that can be found in our state. This includes bison, horses, mammoths, mastodons, saber cats, and even giant beavers. But all the bones that you see on display here at Texas Through Time have to be painstakingly prepared and preserved and ready for display. And that's the work that we do in our lab. This is our prep lab, and this is where all the preparatory work is done, and that is carefully cleaning and conserving the fossils so that they're ready for display. Our first station here is a micro prep station. Uh, we do a lot of work under magnification on really delicate fossils, and so it's very important that we don't do more damage than nature has already done through the processes of erosion. Uh, our next station, we have uh, a jacket that's just been opened, and it's really important to understand that when a jacket gets open, more often than not, you're actually looking at the side of the fossil that was down when it was in the ground. So the top of the fossil gets uh, discovered, uncovered, capped with the jacket, and then that fossil is pedestaled, flipped over, and removed from the field. Our next station is one of these jackets that's been opened, uh, and this is a partial dentition of a shark called Tychotis. So this is actually the set of teeth from a Cretaceous shark that was found in western Kansas. So when we're, after we've opened the jacket and we carefully clean all of the matrix away from it, we'll end up with something that looks very similar to this. So this fossil is nearly ready to be removed and uh, finally cleaned and put on the shelf or put in collections for some researcher in the future to do some work on it. Our last station here, we have Noah doing some work with some hand tools and uh, what are you working on, Noah? I am working on an Allosaurus tooth. It's actually the very first theropod tooth that ever found a meat-eating dinosaur tooth in Wyoming. So I'm very proud of it. Um, right now I'm working away this stuff and trying to use some hand tools to get some dirt away from the actual tooth itself. Excellent. So everything we do in the lab is all about being slow and tedious and carefully removing the matrix of the fossils so that we can preserve them for future generations. Uh, as well as preparing our own fossils, we also prepare fossils for other people. Uh, we've got one project going on right here, which is a partial stegomastodon skull. And uh, this is from Colorado, and it's between two and three million years old. The restoration department is a final stop in our prep lab, and this is where we take all of the fossils that have been carefully prepared and reassembled, and we get them ready for display. This is an important process and final step because a lot of fossils are incomplete when they're found. This could be due to natural processes or it could have been predation at the time that the animal died. So imagine something being eaten, uh, there's not gonna be a lot of it left. So in our restoration department, we can actually rebuild those missing pieces to make the, the fossils whole for display. Kid questions for a paleontologist. What is paleontology? Paleontology is a study of past life, uh, specifically the bones and trace remains of animals that lived long before us. How do we know the age of fossils? We determine the age of fossils by a lot of different ways. Uh, we can use radiocarbon dating, so that's taking uh, certain types of elements that we know uh, they decay at a certain rate, and we can find traces of those in fossils and we can measure how decayed they are. There's also a method called optically stimulated luminescence, and that's basically quartz or feldspar, uh, and how fast they lose light. So we can actually determine when the last time they were exposed to cosmic rays was if they're buried in the ground. And also, uh, a lot of formations are mapped, and we know the age of those formations, so we can extrapolate those formations across large distances and if we find one section of rocks underneath another section, we know, based on other studies, how old those rocks are as well. Besides dinosaurs, are there any other fossils? There are many other types of fossils besides dinosaur fossils that can be found in the state of Texas, including diverse petrified wood. So we had many, many ancient forests throughout time in the state, 
And actually, our state fossil is petrified palm wood. What is the smallest fossil you discovered? The smallest fossil that I've ever personally found was a tooth, and it was 0.2 millimeters. So on the tip of my finger, it looked like a grain of sand. But under a microscope, it was a complete tooth from a small reptile. What is the rarest fossil you found? The rarest fossil that I found is a brand new armored dinosaur. It's the first one ever discovered in the state of Texas, and it represents a whole new genus or group of these animals. So um, the apex of success for any paleontologist is to find something that's never been found before, uh, and is certainly, you know, finding a new dinosaur uh, would be the rarest thing that I've ever found. What makes Texas fossils so special? Texas fossils are really special because we existed in a part of the country uh, that was really kind of its own ecosystem. So we had uh, two continents during the Cretaceous period. One was called Laramidia, one was called Appalachia. And we're one of the few states where both of those dinosaur faunas uh, are represented in our fossil record. What are some of the most common fossils you've found? Some of the most common fossils that I find are uh, invertebrate fossils, echinoids, oysters, clams, uh, and ammonites. So a lot of those can be found in basically any limestone deposit in the state of Texas. Olivia, what is your favorite dinosaur? I kind of like pterodactyls. Mm. Probably the Spinosaurus because I like the way like all the ridges on the back seem really cool because there's a whole like story behind about how the bones are structured and it just seems like a really cool dinosaur in general. The Mosasaurus. Why is that? One of the biggest dinosaurs in the water and oceans. Jordan, if you could be any dinosaur, what would it be? Probably a pterodactyl because like you get to fly really high in the air and do some really cool things and probably make a weird screeching sound like something like that. I think it would be a, a very tall one so that I could see like stuff in the sky and I could see a bunch of clouds and I could also see flying dinosaurs. Do you think dinosaurs sleep? Yeah. I think they did. What do you think they dream about? Eating other animals, probably. Maybe they had nightmares about being eaten, especially the small ones. What do you think about the fluvial processes of geomorphology? Mm -mm. The fluvial papa -wubba? It's cool how the concept works, I guess. <laughs> At Texas Through Time, we do lots of events throughout the year. We have an annual haunted house called Night at the Museum, where we turn the entire museum into a Jurassic World themed haunted house that's really family friendly. We have a Hill County Fossil and Mineral Expo in October annually. We do quarterly dino movie nights. We have lots of kids paleontology classes. We have lots of free events throughout the year. We do have some paid events. Most are nominal fees. I love whenever the kids come in and really get to experience new fun things for the first time. That really inspires me to keep doing more things for them and get them uh, interactive with dinosaurs and paleontology. I do love being a part of the Texas history and the prehistory here. It is really, just really cool to work with such old things um, and to teach others about them. Opening the door for a young person or an old person to experience paleontology for the first time, for them to have the wonder uh, or the sense of wonder th that I did, um, that's probably the most satisfying thing about my job, is just sharing paleontology with others.